if anything I think illustrates exactly what I'm talking about, about her um, dis blatant dishonesty, it's her first segment about Dinosaur Planet turning into Star Fox Adventures. She says that Miyamoto just basically said, hey, uh, I think Star Fox would be great for this game or something therein. Again, her video is the top link on the underbar, so you can make sure that I'm not trying to misrepresent what she says, though, again, I'm going to make the caveat that I'm paraphrasing here. When this is not at all the case. In fact, I'm glad a user by the name of Yuri of Wind did the research that I was going to do into this project and actually has exacting information about what happened to Dinosaur Planet and where everything went. Watch that, watch her tropes video again. Again, I hate to give her views, but oh well. I mean, again, I don't want to seem like I'm trying to keep you away from hearing what she says so that you can compare and contrast what I've said with what she said. But this isn't the case at all. Watch it again. Does she even mention a character named Saber? Of course she doesn't, because that wouldn't fit the narrative. You had two characters. Again, does she mention that? No, she mentions Crystal. Crystal was the main character for a good part of this, but it was a brother and sister team working together at different times, and you could switch them out for different scenarios in different situations. Each had their own uh, pet dinosaur to work with. Does she mention this? No, of course she doesn't, because it does not fit her narrative. And basically, she doesn't seem to realize that Saber looked a lot like Star Fox. Miyamoto saw this when they were starting to port the project over to the GameCube. The reason they ported it over? Because the N64 was at the end of its last legs, and they had the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 2 to contend with. And, yeah, in its, if in its ending days, the N64 was just not going to keep up with those two. So they ported the project over to GameCube, although everything went secret and eventually... Uh, Miyamoto sees Saber in the GameCube edition of Dinosaur Planet and says, you know, this might be a better vehicle for us to put Star Fox in. Partly why? Because they're launching a new system. And what's going to be, what's a flagship title? You should know this, Anita. What is a flagship title from uh, Nintendo? Star Fox. Again, I agree with Yuri of Wind. The changes probably weren't the smartest thing that Nintendo did and, and Miyamoto did because looking at the extended beta uh, footage that Yuri has in his video, link down in the underbar, and I suggest you uh, subscribe to Yuri of Wind. I love his gaming mystery show. I think he does a phenomenal job. Anyways, and you can see how much of the game is actually technically intact except for now Crystal is captured. Um, but again, she misrepresented or omitted facts to try to fit the narrative that on some level, again, we're going with the whole, oh, every guy is subconsciously sexist unless we deem them not to be, in which case they're, uh, I'm not even going to get into that. You know, I'll let you guys figure out who would be the perfect man to, to somebody like Anita's uh, cause here. But the point is, you know, she wants to make the case that on some subconscious level, Miyamoto was depowering Crystal, that the change in a way was to depower Crystal, to employ the damsel in distress mod. And then she goes through and throws out objectification, which I am really honestly sick and tired of this, this term. There is realistic objectification, but a people, people like Anita, who, because she identifies herself as a rad femme, and from what I've seen from a lot of, I'm just going to say a lot of, rad femmes is, if you were even thinking it, even if, I, even if the woman in question cannot tell what you're thinking, 
The very thought that you have sexual thoughts about a random woman in your head is meaning that you have objectified her. You have, in your mind, turned her into a pair of genitalia or a, or a sweet behind or maybe some legs. I'm sure these women have problems with foot fetishes because foot fetishes don't take into account the whole woman. No, no. Foot fetishes reduces women to just a pair of feet. Mm, mm, mm. You fetishists should be ashamed of yourselves with all your objectification. Never mind that it's consensual. <sighs> I digress, though. Again, watch Yuri's video. Watch the first half of Anita's video. See if the information links up. If it doesn't, then it shows that I'm sorry, Miss Feminist Blogger, who uh, says that Anita did her homework. Uh, let me get her name correct because I, I don't. Uh, Miss Jen Boisier, Boisier, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. I do not mean to do that on purpose. But reading your conclusion that it's, it's clear that Anita has done her homework, no, no, she hasn't. I'm just talking about the intro to her video when talking about Star Fox Adventures, and I've already shown, thanks to Yuri of Wind and anybody else who cares to do even further research, that she did not present factual information. And if this is about promoting dialogue, if this is prom about promoting a progressive discussion about how women are portrayed and how women are represented in the gaming industry, which for the record, I'm not opposed to having that conversation, not in the slightest. If anything, I think some slightly better games could come of such a discussion. But when it's being led by somebody who does not care about actual verifiable facts, there is a problem there. There is a disconnect there. And this should show at the very least that she does she either doesn't care about facts or she doesn't care about facts when they do not support her purpose. And I assure you, women, her purpose oftentimes is not your equality. I know it's it's tempting to think that she is into that sort of thing, but watching her videos and, and I'm I'm even willing to say go watch her vanilla videos. Uh, although some users, links down to the underbar, had access to and clips from some videos that she took down. <clears throat> I wanted to close out by talking a, a little bit about some of the talking point, or, or no, uh, yeah, by, by, with, with two things here. One thing I like about this feminist blogger is she said exactly what I felt after the end of part one, that Anita told us things we already know. Which then begs the question, why? Why does she need so much money to tell us what almost any kind of feministic, especially feminist video game vlogging site could have told us for free? Where did the money go, Anita? Because I'm not seeing it. When I passed your intro, and maybe some of your research stuff that you've done there, although I, I, I would put it more as research, because, again, based off the Star Fox example, you didn't do enough of your homework, and it's embarrassing, especially if this is what you want to, to achieve, is this dialogue that's not based off of actual verifiable facts, more opinion, more gut feeling, which does nobody good, no matter which side you're on, whether Team Misogyny or Team Anita. Not that I'm saying those are the only two teams, but I digress. Um, but <clears throat> her talking segments have no new quality to them whatsoever. She could have easily done this with the equipment that she has. And again, it begs the question, where did the money really go? Because it's not going enough into her research. It's certainly not gone into anything other than maybe a new snazzy intro, if that. This is not money well spent. This is not anything new that she's presenting. And so I'm actually a lot with Miss Jen 
boy's ear on most of her talking points here. We know this already. Going over this groundwork does nothing to further the discussion. Which brings me to my last point that I want to make to close this out. And that is the low-hanging fruit that I've tried to stay away from. But again, I think if the only reason why you're blocking, not allowing comments is because you're afraid of rape and death threats, then grow up. This is not showing that you're a strong, independent woman, that any woman should hope to, uh, to emulate in any way, shape, or form. You have a very sex-negative attitude, and I've been talking a great deal about how sex, hurt, sex negativity hurts men and women, and how I don't stand for it, and neither should most of you. But here, me, okay? You could say, well, you're a man. Oh, oh, so I can take it, but she can't? Isn't that reinforcing the idea that women are somehow weaker? I don't play that game here, okay? But I've had people threaten my life. I've had people threaten the life of my son. I've had people threaten to rape or want to rape or praying for my son to get raped because they were so upset about talking points I was making. I might have blocked some of them after finding out that these were people that we're not able to be reasoned with, who did not care about facts and only wanted to espouse their opinions no matter how monstrous or disgusting they might be. I've allowed people, in fact, on one of my newest videos, I had a user by the name of Pedo Wikilinks call me a pedophile despite the fact that there's no evidence for such a thing. Did I block the person? Well, you could go ask them yourselves because they can still comment on my videos. I'm not censoring them because, if anything, I want an open dialogue, even if that comes with a lot of stupidity. The thing is, Miss Anita, I do not believe that you, you yourself, want an open dialogue. Why have I not seen you do many uh, interviews or things of that nature where you're actually debating somebody instead of presenting, oh, poor me, look at all this misogyny. All I said was that video games can be sexist and look at all these terrible men. They're as bad as the Westboro Baptist Church. God, I wish I was making that up. No, she as well as others have tried to say that if you're a dissenter in any way, shape, or form, you do not have, there is no such thing as constructive criticism. You are a hater because you're afraid she's going to take away your precious little, you know, testosterone-fueled video games and that we just simply don't want to have this conversation because we don't like feminism or we don't like Anita because she's a woman. Because you're exactly what you claim your opposition is, and yet you pretend that you're much better because you're the good guys, or good girls, I guess, is what you might prefer, or the strong, independent women. I put it that she's a coward. She has money. She's done appearances. Those are usually paid. She's done talks. She's got all that extra money from her fundraiser, and she can't hire a moderator. I'm sorry, no. If her goal, if her true aim is to talk about or bring an open dialogue to this discussion here, she is doing nothing, nothing to facilitate it. And this whole misinformation stuff is not going to cut it, Miss Anita. You need to step up your game or else you need to be giving people refunds because you are not giving people what you advertised full stop. Now, I encourage you to read all the articles, watch the stuff. I especially love the, uh, the uh, Jen Boisier when she points out that... Uh, you know, that Anita tries to say that she's a uh, Nintendo and a Sega fan, and then she tries to tear apart Nintendo without actually going into the problems that the game industry actually has in terms of sexism, meaning that this entire exercise that she just demonstrated via video format was entirely useless to either side. And that's all I've got for you guys.